excited. I'm the guest host today, Tim Kinley, the uh -huh. host of Speechless. And I don't think it's going to go to you yet, so... <laughs> I'm the anchor. Hey, he's over and there I'm sinking. someplace. <laughs> <laughs> You're sinking? Yeah. Well, there go. <laughs> we'll, we'll, uh, I'll pull you up. All oh, right. boy. We got uh, a number of things we're discussing today, and first, Lauren Sedestrom's going to be here talking about some updates on what's going on in the city of Grant. And then uh, Greg Copeland, who's running for the St. Paul School Board, will be here, and we're going to talk about the Ray Woodstrand uh, situation, the person, uh, the young man who was beat up on Eastside St. Paul, who's an employee of SCC Studios, where this show is coming from, uh, and just kind of discuss the dynamics of what was taking place there. And then also we'll talk about some school board issues and what's going on in the city of St. Paul and just kind of Put, put it all together as to what's happening because it all it's a it's a puzzle that fits and it's a puzzle that needs to be addressed and so we got video from the uh, from the uh, Ray Widstrand uh, community meeting that I think is is very interesting and you should see and understand what's taking place there but uh, for oh uh, we got an announcement I don't know if you're ready for that uh, there is. Uh, Senate District 43, which is Maplewood, White Bear Lake, um, North St. Paul, is having an annual elephant ride. And that will be September 21st, uh, 2013. The ride begins, it's a motorcycle ride, begins at 9 a.m. And same day registration, you can be there at 8 a.m. Pulled pork picnic, 1 p.m. Uh, we don't have the graphic, that's fine. Uh, but horseshoes, bing bag tosh, playground area, guest speakers are coming. You don't have to go on the motorcycle ride to come to this picnic. But uh, uh, 30 bucks for a rider, $5 for a passenger. Uh, if a non rider is, is uh, lunch only, 20 bucks. So great deal. Go to uh, sd43.org and go off, go on this elephant ride where where are they going uh they are uh stellmacher park and white bear lake is where they're meeting and they got a trip planned out so anyway go to the uh, website sd43.org and have some fun on the elephant ride all right lauren all right I'm glad to have you here and uh i'll give you a quick all-around grant update first of all in the white bear press uh as I made the front page, what we have is Grant Celebrates Civil War History. It's been 150 years uh, since Ulysses S. Grant participated in the Civil War. And the, is some, may, some of you may or may not know, Grant used to be called Greenfield, and it went all the way from County Road 15 to the Ramsey County line. And over in the last 150 years, it's been chipped away. It's formed Birchwood, Matamidi, part of Delwood, Pine Springs, Willerney, et cetera. So it's been chipped down, so the grant is just 27 square miles anymore. But the problem was it was named Greenfield, and they had to change the name because there was a city of Green, or town of Greenfield out by Lake Minnetonka. So they decided, because Grant was a Civil War uh, hero, and he then became a president, that they would name the city in the honor of Ulysses S. Grant. So, and we do have a picture of him here on the, on the front page, a very stern looking man. There's also a picture of a participant of the parade in years gone by, a 1918 Mack truck that was a wine truck. It was chain drive. And we have about 80 units and that'll be happening September 7th, Saturday. The parade is at noon. There's a picnic afterwards. And it's been, a, it's been growing. For the, this is the, the fourth year that we've done it. It's become very large. We start at the Goss House. We go down the dirt road through the golf course around the city hall where there's an announcer and Channel 19 does videotape this and present it. And uh, with the running commentary of all the different units that are in there and who they are. And then it goes back to the Gost House where we have a picnic and trophies are awarded for, uh, for the oldest tractors or prettiest tractors, some collectible cars. There's also floats. Residents are encouraged to have floats. Uh, last year, Oak Hill Church got a number three and they said I talked to the minister and he said well gee uh, how can we get a number one and they were very excited <laughs> they showed the trophy in the in the in the uh, s Sunday service 
Uh, that's the, the, the one well, thing I wanted to talk that about. That is a, a, fa a fun, fascinating parade. I, you know, I you was in there, I participated, uh, rode one of your tractors, and that, I just had a blast. And the people were having fun. That's, that's what well, was amazing. All these old tractors. Oh. In old cars and floats. Well, the thing is, the reason this is necessary is first of all the the the, the political some of the political leaders have done nothing and you know but the c city of grant is rural but it's a divided town half of the students go to stillwater the other half go to Montemidi, and there are no restaurants and most people may or may not know right. but in a small agricultural community there's one or two restaurants that are social hubs as is the high school but if it's we have two high schools in our area we're divided and people yep. don't get together yep. But the other thing... And this gets them together. This gets them okay. together. The other thing I was going to talk about is a letter to the editor, uh, which was very important. Uh, who wrote this letter? I did. <laughs> well, I'm not looking for a pat in the forehead, yeah, yeah, no, but no, I was... No, and I talked to the uh, to Carter Johnson, who is the edit okay. editor of the paper, uh, and, and I asked him to plant a retraction because of incorrect information in the... Uh, City Council uh, meeting. The City Council. And it's here it goes. It's a short one. In the Oct August 14th White Bear Press under the Grant City Council notes, which they report on the right. City Council, the writer reported Mayor Carr said the groom's moose quarter issue, they're talking about changing that ordinance, is not about counting horses and that he no longer supports a change in the ordinance because of the liars out there. In mm -hmm. other words, accusing myself and several others of being liars because we had a big protest there over that. In the official J July City Council minutes, it states, quote, he, parentheses the mayor, would also like the breakdown of residential stables and number of horses they have on site, unquote. He said that in a city meeting, and it's on the record. On the record. And he's videotaped. And videotaped in the all-around grand show, which is currently playing, documents the whole thing. It also documents a number of the other falsehoods and misinformation that the city council has supplied everyone with. Okay, to see a complete review of this, okay, and I said that. Also at the August meeting, Dave Tronroot, a one-year resident and car business associate, this is the guy that Tom Carr flips houses with because real estate's slow, right folks? Was appointed to fill Scott Fogelson's seat, who's who left for a corporate job with Farmers Insurance in New Jersey, over the protest of many residents who attended. A number of residents were removed at the meeting by sheriff's deputies at the mayor's request. Is the yeah. city a grant a dictatorship or a democracy? Well, I mean, you got a problem when with your city council if they got to have sheriffs there. They're not listening to the people. Well, that's I, what I mean, and not interacting with them in an intelligent way. I mean, you know, and you can tell by uh, calling you guys liars. And but anyway, when we have documentation. Yeah. But it, you know, for, for more information on this, if you want to see the all around grant show, we have documented. Uh, some of this information for the last four or five years, like they don't want the Charter Commission yeah. to... Well, yeah, to watch all around Grant, you're going to get all that information. All right. So, quick update there. Uh, all right, let's uh, change the camera here, and the, the control room's uh, watching. <laughs> okay. All right. Hey, we're going to start going on to... Uh, uh, oh, also, uh, Lauren has a new U YouTube channel, okay, that's listed. So you can watch all around Grant. It's going to be coming up there soon. It's on the screen. What's, what screen is it on? Uh, I don't see it there. Okay. Um, all right. We're going to start talking. Uh, I'm going to show some video here. And I kind of got the control room jumping around right now because we didn't have a whole lot of time to prepare. But this is Mayor Coleman at the Ray Widstrand uh, meeting about the community, what's going on. Uh, in the community uh, and what the city is trying to do to deal with the gangs and the beatings that are going on. And I just want you to know what Mayor Coleman is doing here is a political speech. He's up for election and in my mind this is what I saw, a political speech being made. It's long but we need to hear it. It's not, well, it's not real long but we're going to get you to the gist of it. So let's play that clip. Thank you. Thanks everybody for coming out tonight. This is uh, an incredibly powerful statement about a community that cares, a community that wants better for uh, our neighborhood here, uh, a community that is uh, just concerned about what is happening on the streets of the east side of the city of St. Paul. 
Um, we did have an opportunity to just remember the victim of this last week's uh, senseless act of violence. But I also want to remember everyone that has been a victim of violence, particularly this last year. There have been a lot of our children, our brothers, our sisters, of all races, of all ages, that have been victims of crimes. And, and we need to remember that this isn't about one incident. This is about a series of behavior. This is about acts that we will not tolerate in our community. This is about acts that no community should tolerate. It is really hard when you've invested your life into a community, when you've raised your family in a community, bought a house, gone to school, opened up a business, tended to your yard, gone to church in this community. To see the things that we have seen, particularly over the last couple of months, happening in the streets of the east side. And I can sit here and tell you all day long about how statistically things are better than they have been, but there is no statistic that will comfort you when you have been a victim of a crime, when your loved one has been a victim of a crime, when you have witnessed some of the acts that are occurring in the streets. What you need to know is that we stand together on all this. You have the top leadership of the city of St. Paul here. Not just elected officials that feel like they have to be here, but we have our department heads that are working in conjunction with all other folks in the community to say, what do we need to do differently? What do we need to do better? How do we make sure that these things don't get repeated? How do we make sure that there's not another victim of a senseless beating? How do we make sure that there's not another child laid to rest too early because of gun violence in our streets? When we come together, we can address these issues. They're not easy. But there are a lot of us and a lot of you that have worked for years to strengthen the east side, to build it up. Whether you've been on the district council or you've been as part of a... I think you see the, the political speech going on there. And uh, I have with me Greg Cop uh, <laughs> Copeland. It's That's Mayor okay. Coleman, Greg Copeland. Uh, right. we're, not, we're not related. No, you're not. Huh? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> well, um, first couple things, you should raise your chair up if well, you can. Uh, <laughs> well, maybe okay. maybe we'll later. Just, we'll live okay. it the way it is. All right. Um, this was a political speech, and what, what was really kind of ticked me off was that we got these plans. We, we need to come together. Well, what have you been doing for eight years? Well, uh, that's the serious question that needs to be asked by voters. Uh, you know, frankly, the mayor, uh, I, as I understand it, wasn't necessarily uh, going to come to this meeting, that there were, uh, there were those who uh, had to persuade him to show up. Now, I don't know. He can address that. But uh, maybe uh, the, you heard how many people were there. Well, the, the reality is that, uh, you know, folks, uh, this was a, a meeting that was scheduled within days of the public information about the incident involving Ray Widstrom's beating uh, right off of Payne Avenue. And 500 people showed up. 500 mm -hmm. people for a room that couldn't hold 200. Right. Uh, the people were backed out to the street, standing in line. Uh, this is an incredible response. So, you know, the mayor, frankly, I think, uh, you know, did, did us really no, no favor. Because what happened is, instead of listening to the people, we had to listen to the mayor. The, the mayor and his staff. That's a huge the, point. The I mean, city council member. Oh, excuse me. There were two that spoke. Uh, we had the county attorney, the city attorney, the police board. chief, the two school board members. Well, one spoke. Uh, one spoke, right. Uh, in fact, I think there were three school board members there. But, I mean, the, the fact is that the, the time that was eaten up by public officials speaking at the beginning of the meeting uh, probably amounted to uh, something on the order of an hour plus. And the meeting was scheduled for a two-hour deal from 6.30 to 8.30. Well, that's, um, that's, you know, and that is a strategy that's used. You I, know, I'm shocked. <laughs> I'm shocked. You get these public, uh, you know, these uh, state reps come have a meeting. You know, they spend half an hour having everybody say their name that's in the room. You know, well, now yeah. that's half an hour you can't communicate right. with them. And, and all the people on the east side, Tim, wanted to do was say what they had to say right. about their experiences with crime in their immediate surroundings right. not not all over the city but in the east side east side and the, and the stories that's because that's the testimony well, we're going to have we're going to okay. play some right. of these stories as we get going 
But uh, we're going to play the next video here, and um, just to show that this was a political rally and supporters of Coleman were there, uh, another man showed up who was running for mayor, and this is what they did to him. Let's watch the video. No, 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 I want to just say something real quick. The reality is, Chief, Chief no, Huntsman, no, 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 I feel tragic for the guy who was assaulted. I also feel that, you know what, the police need to hold the parents accountable. We need to hold the parents accountable. All right, Jim, that's enough time. Ms. Hogan, Ms. Hogan, we'll go to the next speaker. That's that's enough time. He didn't yeah. get he didn't get his minute in there at all. Well, you know, but uh, you know, before the sound was off, but he said, "I'm Tim Holden. I'm running for mayor of St. Paul." Got all these boos. Doesn't matter that he lives in St. Paul. Doesn't matter that he had input, and we don't want to hear it. Really, I mean, that just that was the nature of this yeah. meeting and how uh, divisive and destructive it was. Uh, well, it was it was it totally uncalled for because, frankly, the the meeting was being hosted by the district council. Uh, the president of the district council was the moderator. The woman at the microphone, Leslie McMurray, was uh, controlling that. And to give residents uh, one minute and to give public officials unlimited time, uh, that's what was done. And frankly, you know. The public officials don't need to give us a speech about public safety. They have failed to deliver it, the public safety that they promised, okay? Uh, there is no plan. If they'd had a plan and a strategy, we wouldn't be having the meeting because Mr. Woodstrom wouldn't have been beat up. I'm going to tell you something, Tim, uh, and I think you've got some clips yeah. on this. But, you know, in April, we had our first 70-degree day. And in April on that day, we yeah. had our first little riot with about 20-plus of these uh, uh, little hoodlums beating each other up, at yep. least not yep. beating up uh, an innocent uh, guy walking down the street like Mr. Woodstrom. And then in May, we had another nice 70-degree uh, uh, day, and guess what? It was a Thursday, as I recall. Yep. It was 2.30 in the afternoon. It was in front of my house, and I called 911. And I reported the incident, and the uh, police later blocked off Payne Avenue, brought the horse patrol, the helicopter. I don't know how many units uh, responded, how many officers mm -hmm. and how many squads. Uh, I mean, it was bedlam during the day in May. Now, the police chief, uh, you know, and I wouldn't want to be the police chief for all the tea in China, but, I mean, he's the police chief. He said he thinks it all began in June, on the 1st of June. Right. And I told him at the meeting, you know, no. Uh, we've had an indication this is going to mm -hmm. be a difficult summer uh, as early as the first warm day this uh, spring. Yeah, so, I mean, there was other beatings, other things took place. Sure, there was a shooting. Yeah, and I want you to hear... A killing. Uh, 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 right, beating, shooting, killing. Well, when, Tra mean, but when Trayvon Martin, uh, the verdict came down in that case, remember? Right. Uh, and it was, I believe it was that very day, you had two 17-year-olds uh, involved in a shooting, and one ended up dead, and it was in the Paintville neighborhood there, uh, you know, right in my backyard. Yep. And it's it's uh, ironic that, again, Mr. Martin, he was 17, and we heard all about how he was a child, and, you know, we got a child that's killed by another child in St. Paul at the same time. And it's, you know, other than a few local stories, that was it. So... I don't know. It's amazing how these things go. But the people, when, when 500 people turn out on the east side for any kind of a meeting, that is huge. I've lived oh. there for 20 years, Tim. Huge. Never seen a crowd like that. We had, uh, in the early days of the old level three sex offender meetings, right. yeah. we might get 250, 300 people, and that was huge. Mm -hmm. So this almost doubled the turnout on uh, the meetings that we had on that subject. And frankly, people don't feel like the police have made the security this year uh, a strategic uh, choice for the people. Well, and that gets off into why, you know, the building of the ballparks, and that, that wow. seems to be the focus. Public safety, which is their constitutional duty, didn't seem to be their focus. But let's, let's hear uh, this next on uh, uh, Bert Cobb. Uh, we're going to uh, skip over Chief Smith here, but 
I want you to see some of the reaction, the people that were there, they had some of their stories. And then there's a blame game that starts going on. So a lot of people get blamed, except the kids themselves. But let's, let's see our next video. My name is Rick Cobb. I own two properties over on Coach <coughs> Avenue. I had 30 to 50 kids go into one of my vacant units and have a party. The police came after I started shooting them all out. They co congregated outside. The police made no arrest. They did a breaking and entry. I've got pictures of some of the people, but the police did nothing to discourage them from doing this to somebody else. I am sure would like to know why. Sir, my name is Joe Neuberger. I'm the senior commander for the Eastern District, so the officers have responded report to me. I can't answer that question right now, but if you have one of the contact cards, I will get your information and I will find out. Uh, they should have. Um, I can't give you a good answer right now, and I would prefer not to try and just, you know, tell you something without any kind of factual basis. So, you know, I saw that you were sitting near the front here. I'll get your name and, and contact number, and we'll make sure we find out why. Thank you. Now, this is one thing that happened. They weren't ready to get responses from people. Uh, they had to work on the fly and get people all arranged so that they would take information from people and what was going on. I, I mean, that, I, I found that fascinating. So this got put together fast, but they weren't thinking about community input, community reaction. Yeah, I, I mean, there are a couple of problems. I mean, the, the meeting was held in a place that was too small, right. number one. So the public, uh, frankly, could not uh, begin to really participate because if you know it was not air conditioned the place was hot and this is before we had the extra uh, injection of heat that we've had over the last few days here yeah. that have driven the tenants down at the fair by 70,000 hmm. uh, so you got you got a bad setup there then you had this whole idea that uh, we're going to let every public official in town that shows up give a speech and that eats up basically half the meeting time and we're only going to give citizens one minute and when they get an answer from a public official there's no opportunity to come back and say well wait a minute this is part of the story you're missing that they cut that completely off and then to treat uh, you know other people that show up from other parts of the community there were there were some former uh, there was a former school board member there mm -hmm. from the west side uh, there was a former city clerk who was there from the west side uh, there were people from other parts of the city that came. In fact, uh, Margaret Behrens from Maplewood came mm -hmm, right. uh, because she's concerned about gang activity spilling into the uh, Maplewood, uh, Maplewood area sure. from St. Paul, and, and she's uh, you know complained about that over the years uh, as well. So uh, you know the the possibility for people to interact um, with their neighbors and just tell their story to public officials that could just listen, write this stuff down, and then they could go back and, and contact these people. I mean, there's not a problem with that. Uh, people weren't looking, uh, you know, for this a answer, uh, but because the way they had the room set up and the way they're used to doing things, because we've had these meetings, Tim, so many different times under so many different circumstances, and the, the, the only good thing here is that Ray uh, Woodstrom, uh, you know, wasn't killed. Right. Uh, that's the only difference. And, and the other thing that's different is the Mo Allison was the name, and that guy's name never gets out there. But Mo Allison was the 17-year-old that was killed by the other 17-year-old that uh, I don't believe has been identified at this point. Hmm. Um, so I don't know that they made a decision to try him as an adult or not, but he, but he died, uh, you know, right there. Uh, in the neighborhood on the same day that the Trayvon Martin verdict came down, is my recollection. And, you know, we didn't have a community meeting after that. And there's, and these uh, two uh, and people, another, by the and way, another were... another man was beaten up uh, probably three months earlier, and there was no community meeting on him. Yeah. And, and he and, moved and, out. And the, the, the one thing that I'll say that, that doesn't get said, uh, you know, is that the people that were involved in the shooting were both black. Mm -hmm. The people that were involved in the April uh, mini riot and the... Uh, parking lot of the Salvation Army, they were all black, and they were teenagers. Mm -hmm. And the people that were involved in the uh, May event, the big riot, I mean, there were well over 50 there. Uh, these were mainly, from what I could tell, teenagers, and they were black. 
uh, the, you know, there's a problem. And, you know, we've got to engage with the black community in St. Paul, and it can't be done, uh, you know, an hour before the community meeting, because that's something that the press really hasn't reported. The, uh, uh, there was a meeting held with the so-called black right. leaders of St. Paul. Yes. Okay, now I don't know how they determined that, and I'm not a... Uh, uh, well, organizations, it uh, sounded like. Yeah, well, organizations, what? churches... Yeah, and I don't know how wide the invitation was cast, and, and uh, I think that's important to know. Right. But you don't do that uh, on the fly an hour or so before the meeting with uh, the 500 people. So that they could up. mention it. Uh, well, well, I mean, uh, uh, what was the I'll purpose that, of that? That's your, uh, well. it's yours, and uh, God bless you. <laughs> But no, I, I think that the, the fact is here that you've got to have all of this participation as a matter of business beyond, uh, you know, crisis. We're in a crisis now. Why weren't we having these kind of meetings uh, before and, um, you know, setting some ground rules for a summer that looked like it was coming apart real early and putting out, uh, you know, some sort of programming. The other thing is, uh, and I don't want to go too far off your uh, Yeah, we got a lot of clip, video so here. So I'll, I'll be quiet a minute, and, <laughs> well, and you go ahead and pick up. Well, I, I think something you mentioned is about a long-term strategy. Well, that's where I was going, exactly. And, and, and that needs to be mentioned. We're going to so, show some clips on that. Okay. But uh, this next clip, oh, well, we got a phone call. Let's hear from the phone call. I love phone call. <laughs> call, you got a comment or question? Tim Kinley, thanks for doing this show on that east side meltdown. And my question is, you know, I'm looking at your video there, and why is the public in the back of the room and all the failed political operatives in the front? You would think that if somebody was able to ask their one-minute question, they would actually like to look the guys who are running, whether it's the campaign team leaders or the police chief or the mayor who seems to be distant and dazed off, they'd like to look them in the eyes to see if they were genuine about receiving their comments. And, you know... The other question I have, number two, is why or who is directing it? Is it the police chief or the mayor's campaign team? Or, unbelievably, the mayor is actually directing something? Having all the east side officers out chasing seniors who are on Phelan Boulevard who are going, you know, 38 miles an hour in a 35-mile zone or not wearing their seat uh, belts instead of taking care of the public safety issues like they should be on the East St. Paul uh, side. Is there any explanation? And is there going to be any report or investigation of where the breakdown came, whether it's the political operation that broke down or whether the police department chain of command operation broke, broke down, or is they had this little meeting here? Right. And, I, well, uh, Caller, I think you bring up it. some very good issues Thank there. You. And, yeah. and yeah. follow-up is always always questionable on any of these things because it takes a lot of energy right and so that is there going to be follow-up i don't know have you well, heard of any follow-up you know at this point uh, no but i will say personally uh, i i did have an occasion to uh, uh, run into chief smith under uh, other circumstances since the meeting and uh, he said that he'd be happy to to have a, a meeting with me because uh, i had uh, shown an interest in finding out what can we do to reach the youth involved in this because, you know, St. Paul doesn't want a, a, a garrison, uh, you know, a state going on on the east side, and that's just not realistic long term. Right. No. We've got to deal with uh, the population uh, of young people that feel so disaffected from uh, the values that their parents and the community seeks to have them learn in the schools and the churches and the sport uh, leagues that they're involved in, if they are. Uh, you know, somebody's taken the place of those traditional uh, sources of values, it seems to me, when you have this level of activity in the streets mm -hmm. during the day. Right. During the day. You know, in the past, they used to have these, uh, the chief called them flash mobs. I don't know that I'd call them flash mobs, but that was his term. Well, they used the technology to get to the, yeah, that okay, point. Okay, so we had these groups of kids uh, in the evenings uh, for a few years, uh, and this was several years ago. Frankly, they'd kind of gone away uh, in my area. But on Saturday and Friday nights, uh, invariably, if it was hot out, uh, you know, you would have this kind of activity, and the police would more or less move them along. And, and well, but you don't, you don't have to go beating up and well, precisely. and having a fight, precisely. Which, which is being unsaid in this thing. Well, and these is that two, two women... Two women started the fight, and I don't. We haven't heard anything if they're being charged for inciting a riot 
or uh, disorderly conduct or whatever, because they should be. The consequences of that fight brought the people together and caused other people to uh, react. Well, yeah, and, I, and I th the other thing I think that we have to also be cognizant of here is that this took place within sight of the police station, the, yeah, the team, the team station on the corner of Payne and Minnehaha. Now, I was told, and I haven't asked the chief independently to verify this, but that there was an incident uh, in Frogtown where there were a hundred youth supposedly causing whatever uh, activity on the street and the police were dispatched to that event. Well, that, that could well be, I don't know. Uh, but, you know, uh, people have asked, why wasn't somebody on top of this temp? Why weren't they there when Ray was getting beaten by juveniles? You know, there was a, or one adult, and I think, uh, was it? Uh, how, how can you get there that quick? And I think well, that's a big issue that comes up. I mean, well, there's a part of it where you can't be there that well, the, quick. The, but how long did the thing The Pioneer take? Press uh, coverage, uh, you know, was pretty good on this. They interviewed some of the people that witnessed. I mean, so there how are long, witnesses how to long this. was it? Uh, you know, I don't know the answer to that. I'll be okay. honest. But, uh, but what I'm getting at is that this was not something that happened in two minutes or three. This was going on and on. Right. And this poor man, this 26-year-old new resident, new fellow right. who, who works here at the studio, uh, an employee of the SCC studio right here in River City, is treated this way? A 26-year-old young man right. who is a, who's a master control technician here at the uh, SCC? This is intolerable. And, and frankly, uh, I understand, and, and it's due people reading the media, that they want an early trial. They well, know. and, and uh, he's got a right to an early well, trial. Well, he, so he does. And, and that's a big issue because we're going to see this next yeah. video here, and this is Kathy Kiefer speaking. Yes. She says some things that I just think are out of line, okay. uh, and you'll see people in the background shaking their heads. You don't right. do this, but let's hear what she has to say right. and then the response. Hi, my name is Kathy Kiefer, and I live on the east side of Minnehaha. Um, my big, biggest question is, our officers are doing a great job, but it doesn't seem like they're being backed up by the administration. They're, they're trained to keep people down, but when they do this, they get reprimanded. And I don't think it's fair. I, they just, they need to have the authority to thump some heads. And <laughs> that's what it is. Okay, Kathy, thank you for your, uh, your comments. All right. Okay. The authority of the thump heads. Okay, well. one guy gets up there and says the police aren't doing their job, and which from the example, from the testimony there, they weren't doing their job, then they're not educating the people how to get the police to do their job. And now this person's saying the police are doing a good job, but the administration isn't backing them up. Okay, so we get this blame well, game going. I, I, th on. I think we just go right to the point that, uh, you know, I know Kathy. Uh, she's lived on Railroad Island where this incident took place for a long, long time, as long as I've known her. She has a business there. Her and her late husband have lived in there apartment above their business for years she's a she's a good citizen uh, you know clearly i think she was making an emotional uh right. comment there she's responding out of frustration because you know we oh, don't see oh, the definitely. parents and the uh, taking ownership for the children's behavior i mean these are teenagers they are not adults uh, no we don't the answer to violence is not more violence mm -hmm. clearly that is not the way to go what i think the answer is, is, in, in part uh, bears on is engaging students in their education you know we have a, we have a school system in st paul that unfortunately uh has not been very successful at producing among our uh students of color our lower income students uh, uh a success to uh, take them on to something in their lives uh, in fact as a system the, the entire school system in 2011 only produced uh, graduates uh, that is, for people who walked in the door in kindergarten to walking out with a diploma 12 years later, 64%. Well, uh, you're speaking of that, but you were talking before the school board, and I want you to get the video ready here. Um, uh, uh, it's number 12. Uh, it says it should be Copeland School Board or SB, Copeland SB, on the right-hand side uh, there. So we're going to play this video because you present these things, and I, I, I think it ties 
it ties in very nicely with what's going on in the community. So let's play this video. Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen of the board and members of the public, staff, superintendent. Uh, it's nice to initiate your new policy, uh, uh, at least the kickoff here. Um, I wanted to talk about a couple of things. I gave a copy of uh, a larger piece of my remarks to your secretary, Ms. Paulfus, and uh, I'm, I'm concerned about uh, last month's action with regard to racial equity. Um, it seems to me that this board has spent a, a ton of money, $1.2 million over the last three years, and proposes to spend yet more money on this California-based uh, partnership that uh, has come with their PhDs to tell us about how uh, to run a school system, apparently. I, we're spending this money not on our children, but on the adults. Um, and of course, you all had a great debate about it. I read it in the minutes, uh, and it's, it's a great, uh, great debating point, but frankly, I don't think it's going to advance the uh, education of one child in this school system. Uh, we have a graduation rate as of 2011, according to your own website, of 64%. That means over a third of the people that enter the building at kindergarten leave without a high school diploma. I think that ought to be the focus of our work. And additionally, some of you uh, joined the hundreds of people that showed uh, an interest in uh, the problem we have in our city with gangs. Uh, last Thursday, we had a meeting in my neighborhood of Payne Phelan area, and uh, people there are very concerned about the level of violence uh, not only in this neighborhood that I happen to live in, but in our city in general. I understand that uh, one of the reasons they couldn't be with Mr. Wittstrom, who was beaten uh, within a shadow of his life, was because there was another uh, riot going on over in uh, Frogtown uh, on that evening at that time. And then I understand that the police are moving people around the city. Uh, well, all those are short-term uh, deals. What we need, I think, is the engagement of the school board to actually bring some prevention to the table. And in doing some research on this, uh, there's a program that's operated by the U.S. Department of Justice. It's called the GREAT Program, Gang Resistance Education and Training Program. And we have some school resource officers that in the past were trained in that. They may start, some of those grads may still be with us. I understand we only have 10 resource officers in our schools. Dozens of schools and 10 resource officers. You know what? We ought to spend that 1.2 million. Oh, that's right. That's gone. We can't get it back. We ought to spend whatever you plan on spending on racial equity on hiring some more school resource officers. And frankly, folks, if we don't do that, we're going to have a repeat of what happened in Frogtown and on the east side the other night. And I hope that doesn't happen. And uh, I see we have seven seconds left. The other thing I wanted to mention to you was that uh, if you could, that we could have the truth and taxation hearing before election day. I've been arguing this with county commissioners and city council members, not just with school board members thank for you, many Mr. years. Thank you, Mr. Kaplan. And thank you for your uh, kind attention. Mm -hmm. Well, there you, there you go. Well, yeah. And, and what, I'm, what I'm trying to propose, uh, Tim, is that the school board not just sit by and watch things happen. I mean, the right. school board is the one agency in the, in the city uh, regime here of government that actually has contact on a long-term basis with our young people. Absolutely. So why are we not going to take advantage of that opportunity? Why, why would the system of uh, education in our city not include some socialization, some learning, some, uh, some introduction to what it is like to live in a uh, society where the police officer uh, is your friend? Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, why don't we begin with that because the the, the uh, obviously there's a, a long tradition that we hear about of of uh, you know mistrust in various communities with uh, agents of the government whether from immigrant communities who uh, un unfortunately lived in places that were run as police states or in the 60s in this country uh, in the south when the police were agents of uh, racist governments uh, in those communities in the South. Mm -hmm. um, but you know what? It's 2013. And you know what? In our St. Paul school system, 76% plus of the children who are attending the school system are children of color. We are not talking about a system where the uh, so-called minority is uh, you know, not in charge. The reality is 
the uh, everybody's a minority. The, well, the the Caucasian student, if you will, who's thought of as somehow in a majority status, is certainly not, because only one, in fact, less than one in four students in St. Paul, uh, is white. So the, the the point is that we need to have a school board that's willing to take ownership of the reality that we are in today, and deal with the fact that we have some. Uh, some work to do that hasn't been taken care of. You know, when you're busy taking adults out for seminars on racial equity, adults that have master's yeah, degrees and right. PhDs, because they have some issue uh, regarding the distribution of resources in the community, uh, well, then, you know, we as a, as a community need to address that. But we don't need to have somebody from California that walks out of St. Paul with over a million dollars that should right. be spent on children. Why aren't we tutoring right. children? Why aren't we working well, on what, getting those skills? Tutoring them with what? I mean, to, if we teach them the Constitution, you're teaching values. Well, and those values say police are for protecting to your constitutional rights. And, and part of that is somebody can't beat up on you. Right. Therefore, you can't beat up on somebody else. Otherwise, then that police officer is not friendly. Then your neighbors are not friendly. Yeah. But they're there to protect you if somebody violates your constitutional right. But now we have people doing all kinds of games in the city council and not following the laws of how a charter commission uh, uh, a referendum uh, yeah. ballot, you know, whether how many people get to sign that. We're not going to follow those laws. And so that's what's taught. The, we're going to trick as much as we can, and we're going to make it hard for people as much as we can, and we're going to deceive. And that's what we're teaching our kids, you know. So why can't we do that instead of all this other stuff that doesn't work? Well, you know, I, I, I just think we, we really don't have any other choice than to uh, meet this thing head on and have these, these students and their parents or their guardians or whomever it is that's in their lives that make sure that they have uh, a place to sleep at night and, and uh, you know some food to eat in the morning and are yeah. off to school uh, we need to engage these folks and and frankly uh, you know uh, I think there's some students that would probably uh, enjoy being in the school environment beyond the uh, normal school year right. where we have uh, you know we're just closed the schools arbitrarily because you know that's what we did in the old farm days right and you know I think there's there's plenty of students that would rather advance their education you know if you could promise them to get out of school uh, a year and a half earlier in terms of the sure. cycle with their age and get them the education because when you're well, talking I about mean, the it's Constitution, a free education well yeah and and it's being given to them and but, take advantage of but, it but I you, don't know. You, we saw the test results uh, from the state this week uh, on the MCAs and uh, we know that there's a new reading test and we've we heard for uh, for weeks from the Education Commissioner Brenda Caselius about how the scores weren't going to be good. Well, she said that because she knew what the scores were. She, it's her agency that gives the test, okay? Yeah, right. So, I mean, yeah. you, know, uh, I, that, you know, now we're blaming the test. Uh, you know, it's always something. I think what we've got to do is take some ownership. The, the student's got to take some ownership. That's critical because right. if, the, if the student doesn't see it in their interest to, to grow uh, themselves, uh, there's little that we can do. Uh, obviously, and when you're talking about the Constitution, I'd love to teach them the Constitution, but we've got to get them to be able to read and write and do math. Well, and that's and, what you and, use and, the Constitution and, and to help I, them do. Well, that. you know what? I, I think <laughs> they got to hire you as the professor there, yeah, doctor. Right. But, all right, all right, we got a phone call, uh, caller. Uh, I hope you're still there. We kind of kept you for a while. Do you got a comment or question? Well, I have uh, I have a comment. First of all, um, I really appreciated the letter to the editor that Mr. Copeland had in the. Pioneer Press. It really spelled out many of the things that he's also stated tonight on this program. But I think that um, there are lots of members of the community that that would have good ideas, and it's a way to uh, gather them together, perhaps in a community forum, um, and uh, have breakout rooms and have interpreters and. So everybody's getting the same information. And another thing that would help is um, if the police, uh, local neighborhood police departments were open and you didn't run to them and the doors are locked. Um, I think uh, they're doing that, of course, maybe for their protection, but um, that's the whole point. Um, what can we do 
to uh, help the community help themselves, and I think there's a lot of people willing. Uh, years ago, of course, yeah. being old, I remember that time, <laughs> and um, the kids were afraid to, uh, were out on the street with a family they created because they were afraid to stay home alone at night. But at any rate, I won't keep you any longer, but I think we need to have a community forum with breakout rooms, and perhaps we could use Ramsey County um Children's Services Committee to uh, perhaps, um, you know, uh, make that happen. Uh, thanks for your time. Yeah, very, very good comments, caller. Uh, what we heard at that meeting was a lot of blame, blaming the parents, police, administration, landlords, schools, the churches, the media. All these things got blamed. And But we do have a representative form of government. We have people in place that are supposed to be organizing and watching over these things. And, well, and now what I liked when uh, Diana Longer was mayor, she communicated. She was out there with the people. We had the mayor's forum. We had visitors' presentation. We had uh, that's open communication so you can talk, and there was feedback uh, back and forth. Uh, is that go on in St. Paul? Uh, no, uh, the uh, unfortunately not. The now I'll, I'll give credit to the uh, school board. They do uh, now have their um, citizen input at the beginning of the meeting at five thirty. Um, How many people well, could make I, it at five thirty? I know. I, just, I know it. Uh, I mean, we used to have it at seven o'clock in the middle of the meeting, but but uh, you know, from my perspective, but it was a time certain, so you can show true. up and well, it's certain at five thirty. I I mean, the idea yeah. is if they have something on the agenda and. They've already been halfway through their agenda by the time the public gets yeah, to speak. That, that's you know, yeah. I mean, honestly, I, I frankly don't understand why we couldn't have a situation where if a member of the public wants to offer a comment during the time that the board is taking up an item, why not have that discussion then? I mean, it's very nice to have public comment on broader issues that aren't necessarily on the agenda precisely, but where there are agenda items, what is the problem with engaging members of the public uh, if they're there and they want to participate? Uh, in the solution of these problems because frankly you know what I find is uh, the reality okay is that there's no magic uh, group of people that are coming to rescue us from our problems we have to take ownership over the problem mm -hmm. we can't blame everybody else for the problem uh, now you know and it's done right I mean because it's right. it's human that, nature I have nothing it, to right do with there. it it's that guy over there right. behind no. the wall exactly uh, it's, it's kind of like that deal with the pay no attention to the man behind the curtain on the Wizard of Oz uh, thinking that somehow he was going to solve all of Dorothy's problems well we all know that that didn't work out either yeah. the, the reality is that if people want to solve these problems it, like the caller said, they need to get together and be able to work on the problem, and there's plenty of work to do. And I think you've got to get the young people involved in, in dealing with this themselves, taking some ownership. That has to be theirs. Uh, you know, and, and the adults have to lead that. Well, I, because I, of course. You take the adults, and this is why this is happening, because the adults aren't in the equation giving them input. Although these kids will go wild. Every single child will go wild without the adult restraint that's in there. Well, I, that, that needs to be there. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we, no, I don't, we I have don't a responsibility. Think, I don't think people think that anymore. Well, we, we have a responsibility, uh, though, to, to take action. As, and action is not blaming somebody. It's not complaining at the microphone and sitting down and then going home and right. forgetting about what happened. Because that doesn't help Ray. And that doesn't help no. all the other people that are out there that could be the next Ray. Your, your daughter, your friend, your neighbor. I mean, we have to go. I mean, the law enforcement people have to do their job. They have to take the bad guys off the street. There's right. no question about that. And we have to help and, them and, do it. And, you know, I'm not worried about their little heads, uh, you know, because when they get to the, the jailhouse, uh, I mean, uh, you know, whatever happens there, uh, we'll have to deal with inside the building. Mm -hmm. But, you know, at this point, we, it's more than the policeman, okay? It's more right. than the chief of police. It's... Uh, are, are we going to engage in a strategy here? And, and you know, Maplewood and St. Paul are neighbors. Right. You know, it's not like the problem stops at the border. No, it doesn't. And so... Well, I, we had a police officer uh, killed in Maplewood because it didn't stop at the border. Exactly right. You so. know, you're, you're making an excellent point there. Yeah. That's exactly right. And we, we don't need any of that again. Um, and, and if we don't take some action... 
then we're going to have this uh, happen again. And, and, you know, we have to get past, uh, well, you know, that's not in the school budget, and that's not in the city budget, and it's not uh, in the we, county commissioner budget. You we know, have all, all these teachers that we're paying every year. They're getting their salary. It's got to be in the curriculum. There has to be values taught in the curriculum, and it's not there. I mean, and that's part of the problem. we got too many people saying, no, you can't teach these values. Yeah. Well, of course, uh, I, I think there are some things that we can do that we can agree on as a larger community, all right, uh, with regard to the, the gang problem, okay? Right. And this might be a place to start, and, and we should look at this as an opportunity. Are we going to let Ray uh, Woodstrom uh, suffer uh, in a hospital without taking some uh, benefit out of this circumstance and, and recognizing that, you know, what happened to him was not a freak accident. It is part of a problem that right. we have not been willing to admit to. And, you it's know, a and human it, nature problem. It <laughs> is, and and w let's let's deal with it. Let's fund the necessary training. The federal government. I mean, I, I I'm a conservative guy on the money side, but you know the reality is that if we don't spend some money up front. Right. We're going to spend many, many more dollars on all kinds of other services, and we're going to be unhappy in the process, and people are going to complain, and we're going to have a lot more of those community meetings with 500 people, right. and we don't need any more of that. No. Uh, much better to have uh, people in a room at a school or at some other uh, place or many places uh, trying to take this on and, and as a community project, uh, frankly, and have the... Um, the various elected officials working together on something, uh, you know, rather than uh, figuring out how they can, uh, you know, advance uh, <laughs> advance uh, their government entity over yeah. somebody yeah. else and another government entity, because this is where the police uh, people, as the p school resource officers, are uh, compensated uh, in part by the the school board. There's federal training that comes only to uh, officers. Um, through the uh, National Training Center in La Crosse. Mm -hmm. And because we're far enough away, they can even get to stay there overnight for the training at no charge. Yeah. Because guess what? You paid it in your federal taxes, and if we don't use that resource, we're kind of foolish. They've got other training materials for our young people that are available without charge. Uh, and this, I'm not introducing anything. I went back into uh, some minutes, uh, Tim, from uh, 2007. Mm -hmm. There was a consent decree on the west side of St. Paul uh, with some of the Latino parents in the community who didn't feel that they were getting all that they should of the Humboldt School. Mm -hmm. In the discussion of that consent decree in 2007, you would think we were talking about the same sorts of things, uh, right. you know, minus Ray's injuries, Ray right. Winston's injuries, that we are now. And so they were talking about the, that program at that time. There were. Uh, 18 um, school resource officers in St. Paul. I don't think 18 is uh, probably much of a, no, a dent either. But, it, you know, uh, the, the police chief told me he's bought seven more. Excuse me. Uh, he had seven when he started. He's brought three more on since he's been here, mm -hmm. which isn't very long. Uh, and he wants to do more. Mm -hmm. So I think we should, uh, you know, try and instead of sniping... Well, and, and, that, and, 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 and there's that's a reasonable what, investigation and, that's and what all that. that but, uh, what I got was the police were there. They they were going to run the meeting, and then well, then the mayor came. You know, we've been through that so. before with the police. And, <laughs> we've and got I, another video here okay. where I want to show real quick. Uh, go to uh, the Joseph uh, Bal Truconis, I think, uh, video. All right, let's play that. And, uh, Let's try to keep our questions focused on the panel of experts that we have here and the response to the incidents involved. Next questioner, please. I have the microphone. My name is Joseph Baltruconis. I do a lot of volunteering here on the east side. It's very apparent that we have a crime problem here and perhaps a very serious gang problem. We have a rec center, that, a miracle center that's going up at Payne and Maryland. But how many rec centers did we have to close in order to get this one rec center? We can spend $10 million on polar bears. We can spend $10 million on gorillas and apes. We can spend millions of dollars on a Como pool. We can spend millions of dollars to remove contaminated soil. 
from a second rate ballpark that's going up. <laughs> and how many millions just to build that ballpark? My point is... Did you have a question for the panel? Yes. Why? Why? Why is the east side a budgetary constraint and not a budgetary priority? I asked for a few hours for a rec center. They told me budgetary constraints. I have another point, too. No. <laughs> All right, well, he raises some good points. We're not going to show any more videos, so you can get the end of the show ready there. The, uh, there's a lot of focus and a lot of time and energy being spent on all these expenditures. And they, what, what's the deal here? They're closing some of the rec centers, or they did? Yes, uh, it's, it's been a policy of this mayor, Mayor Coleman, to uh, close. Uh, it's almost a rec center a year, I mean, th that he's been in office. Now, what they do with some of them, too, is they... Uh, to their terms, spin them off to some nonprofit organizations. Uh, for, for whatever reason, the mayor has determined that the city should not be prioritizing the spending of uh, city funds on uh, school rec centers. Now, uh, you know, I, I'm not going to explain what the mayor's policy is because I don't know that he's ever explained it to us. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, right. what he's done is he's just done it. Uh -huh. And people are not happy about it. Uh, Duluth and Case, uh, which is a rec center near me, um, they wanted to close that. And I went to their national night out. It's not the closest place to me. I've got two other parks mm -hmm. that I uh, didn't go visit that are right next door. But I went there because I wanted to see, you know. And, you know, the, the parking lot was full of children, full of parents, full of community members, full of uh, old guys like me and some right. old, older right. ladies. Uh, although all look very young right. to me, ladies, though. Uh, but seriously, we, we uh, saved that rec center. And oh, we're, we're, we're running down. We're running down. Well, you know what, Tim? It's a big job, and thank you for having well, us on. Greg, thank you for coming. And it's a, it's, a, it's a big concern in St. Paul, and the direction needs to get set. All right, next week, uh, 8.30, we'll be live. Tomorrow night, watch Speechless, 8 o'clock. I'll be on again. Good night. God bless.